Good morning and welcome to Wednesday morning prayer. A bitterly cold morning, but at least it's nothing compared to what they're going through in America with the new results of their new president. So we remember our brothers and sisters in America today on the election of their new president, Donald Trump. And we just say, Lord, clearly you are in the decision and clearly you will guide him and the people of a land we love. So we begin by lighting a candle for peace and for unity, especially in America, where there may be a great fallout because of the Clinton and Trump supporters. So we pray for unity and peace and acceptance in that land. And we pray for peace in our own land but more importantly, coming home, we pray for the Frank Lara Abbey of peace and compassion, God's vision for his people, for unity and peace within all faiths and none. So good morning and welcome to dear Sister Jan and Sue who've logged in. And we now begin with the prologue of our brother and sister scenes of Mount Sinai, as we say, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother, and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Wednesday morning, we commune with the angel of the sun saying, angel of the sun, enter my solar center and give the fire of life to my entire body. As these words are spoken, you contemplate the rising sun and experience the accumulated solar energies radiating through your solar center, located at the solar plexus, sending healing life force energy through your entire body. <coughs> We're going to begin with a lovely prayer. <coughs> It's a prayer from the Navajo Indians of Arizona. May it be beautiful all around me. House made of dawn. House made of evening light. House made of dark cloud. House made of grasshoppers. Dark cloud is at the door. The zigzag lightning stands high upon it. An offering I make, restore my feet for me, restore my legs for me, restore my body for me, restore my mind for me, and restore my voice for me. Happily I recover, happily my interior becomes cool, happily I go forth, my interior feeling cool may I walk. No longer sore may I walk, impervious to pain may I walk, with lively feelings may I walk, as it used to be long ago may I walk. Happily may I walk, happily with abundant dark clouds may I walk, happily with abundant showers may I walk, happily with abundant plants may I walk. Happily on a trail of pollen may I walk, happily may I walk. Being as it used to be long ago, may I walk. May it be beautiful before me, may it be beautiful behind me. May it be beautiful below me, may it be beautiful above me. May it be beautiful all around me. And that's from the Navajo Indians of Arizona. Hmm. And our first reading today for Wednesday morning from the little book of um, Christian Reflections we read, Learn to encourage yourself. In 1 Samuel we read, David strengthened himself in the Lord. David had just won a string of spectacular military victories. But when he returned from battle and found his home destroyed by the Amalekites and his family taken captive, 
he was heart sick. He and his men fell to the ground and wept until they could weep no more. But he didn't stay down. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fall and without fail recover all. And David's self-encouragement, coupled with God's guidance, led him to his next victory. There's a lesson here. You must learn how to talk to yourself the right way, how to quote God's promises, and how to pray for yourself. And here's a promise from the Psalms that you can stand on. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And that's Psalm 30, verse 5. Your joy will return. God has promised it. So look in the mirror today and declare, this too shall pass. What doesn't destroy me makes me stronger. But in the meantime, I will let this situation drive me closer to you, Lord. Come on, start encouraging yourself. The biggest battles bring the biggest victories. Your weaknesses can become discovery points for strengths you never knew you had. Recalling the worst time in his life, Joseph said, God turned into good what you meant for evil. And he still does that. Other people don't control your destiny. God does. And he's not like others. He can turn your pain into gain and your scars into stars. Regroup, refocus, and resolve to press on. And the word for you today is, learn to encourage yourself. That's a good reading. Learn to encourage yourself. Let's just reflect on that. Let's encourage yourself. Maybe today you're faced with a few challenges. Maybe there are family problems, or maybe the results in America have not met with your pleasure, or you are left feeling vulnerable, angry, disappointed. And you're thinking, whatever next? But when we bring our feelings, our negative mindsets to the Lord, and listen for his voice, we can take comfort, can't we? And he says, your joy will return. God has promised it. So let us not focus on the negative, because remember, what happened in America regarding the election of Donald Trump the American people didn't really have two good candidates, but money, they say money can buy anything. Well, it bought two representatives that really didn't represent the ordinary people of America. It scored points. But you know, even in religion and even in the Catholic Church, we had our own scandals too, where they appointed the Borgias who weren't priests to become the next Pope, and mayhem and scandal followed. But in time, God does hear the cries of his children and brings someone into the arena that dispels all fear. Like Francis of Assisi, he came at a time in the 12th century when the church was so corrupt, so corrupt, that many within the Vatican looked at this simple beggar man 
and they thought, oh my God, who is this in rags who came to the Vatican to see the Pope? But yet God used Francis to be a messenger for the then Pope to bring an important message to the people of Jerusalem. We should never underestimate the power of God because out of darkness, light always flows. And even in our own lives, I remember an old brother monk telling me many years ago, he said, brother, man's disappointment today is God's appointment for our tomorrow. And that is a true saying and I've seen it in my own life many times. And I pray that you too will experience the impact of those words in your life today. Right now, our next reading is from Epistles Now. We're going to open it and trust in the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 2. The revelation of God has been adequate. We know all that we need to know and have seen all that we need to see, can experience all that we need to experience to be assured of God's saving love. There is no longer any excuse for our ignorance or our reluctance to return to our Creator and God. And those who procrastinate have no one to blame but themselves. God has come to us assuming a status and a position that was inferior to the very angels who were his subordinates, becoming mortal, taking upon himself our very nature, born of a human mother, died at the hands of cruel executioners, all in order that we might live forever as his sons and daughters. And he continues to dwell with us through his spirit who inhabits our lives and reveals his purposes and provides his grace for joyful and meaningful living and serving. Indeed, there is no excuse and there is no other way into the loving heart of God. What a savior we have. We are no longer strangers to God, aliens to his love and holiness, traitors to his purposes. Jesus actually became, in spiritual terms, our brother. He participated in our humanity. He identified with our suffering. He shared in our weaknesses and he called us his brothers and sisters. We can't fathom this amazing truth but we can become, with Christ, God's sons and daughters by participating in and becoming identified with this Christ and his revelations of the Father Mother God. Through Christ, we now have the same Father Mother God. With Christ, we become his beloved children. It happens the very moment we claim and lay hold lay hold of and submit to by faith what God has done on our behalf. That is a lovely reading and it touches the heart. So let us come into the presence of the Lord Christ, our brother and our teacher, and let us bring to the heart of God all that may be troubling us this new day or maybe share with the Lord your joys of gratitude. Let us be aware that Christ is present and that he cares for each one of us. So now we come to our morning intercessions and we pray. God is love. He who dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. In Jesus Christ, we see how God loves us. So let us renew our faith in his love today. 
You have given us life and light this morning. Let us give thanks for the gifts from your sacred hands. You are sole master of the future, our future. Keep us from despair and the fear of what is to come. Love has no ambition to seek anything for itself. Strengthen our will to give up selfishness today. And may your love in us overcome all things. Let there be no limit to our faith, our hope, and our endurance. And for a moment now, let us be still and just come into the presence of the Lord Christ. And let us name, bless, and release those issues that are causing us inner turmoil, unease, or maybe unhappiness, and release them now to the Lord God in a mindset of gratitude, and just keep saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. This morning, we bring the Franklara Abbey of Peace and Compassion, God's vision for his people to unite, where different beliefs, different brothers and sisters of different faith groups will come together and sing and dance the canticle of the preachers three times a day. But we pray today for the results in the American elections for a new president, and whilst many of us are sort of dismayed, disappointment, disappointed, but God has a plan for everything. And we must trust in God that the result, hopefully, is divinely guided and inspired. And that through the new president, Donald Trump, that God's spirit can begin to work in him and through him for the American peoples. We pray today for our dear Jan, who's with us this morning, where the engineers are due to come to do an appraisal of land earmarked for further development, but may be held up because there's a presence of crested newts. We pray we pray for all the help and support that Jan and her husband now needs to proceed with this development so that they can continue their work there, caring for God's children who have special needs. We pray today for all our brothers and sisters of the Teo community, past and present. We pray for those who have special requests today Dear Sister Miriam, who's relocated to the north of New Zealand, we pray that she will be able to familiarize herself with her new surroundings and find happiness and peace there. We pray for dear brother Harry. And we pray for all of those who are struggling today with mental health issues or physical disabilities. We pray especially for Sister Sue and her family, but we pray for her friend Paul, who came here at the weekend, and who's been an enormous strength to his son, Ben. We pray for Ben. Yes, with Jan, we pray for all here and in our archives, for all who need healing in mind, body, and spirit, for world peace, especially now, with the election of a new president. Regardless of his background, we pray that God's peace will prevail in the hearts of all God's children. But we pray today for healing of our beautiful planet, of this sacred earth that mankind has abused through drilling and taking her resources through deforestation and destroying the habitats of the wildlife, for the melting glaciers, where even the wildlife are suffering and struggling to stay alive, for climate change, 
introduced by man's greed. So we pray today for all those who respect the earth and who give something back. But we pray for all peoples, all creeds and none, all colors, backgrounds, whatever, that they too will know that they are loved by God and that their needs will be met today. So let us come together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us the times when we doubted you, for the times when we got locked in a mindset of fear and deep-rooted anxiety. Protect us from those forces of evil and negativity and despair. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And coming to our little book of interfaith prayers, we open it and we read it's a traditional poem credited to Lei Zhu peace in the world so here goes if there is to be peace in the world there must be peace in the nations if there is to be peace in the nations there must be peace in the cities there must be peace between neighbors and if there is to be peace between neighbors there must be peace in the home. If there is to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. So on that note, we bring all whom we have remembered this morning and we thank the Lord Christ in the presence of all the great spiritual teachers of all faith traditions for coming to our aid today and for providing the support and the nourishment for all the children of God. Amen. So we say, go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of our God reawaken in your heart that you are love and that your life matters to God today. So I wish you a pleasant sleep if it's your bedtime, but if you're beginning your day like many of us here, I pray that you have a really good day despite the rain and the cold till we meet again. God bless you.